In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever into the age, all ages, amen. Uh, thanks for joining us again on our sixth uh, talk on uh, the in-depth study for the Orthodox Creed. Um, <clears throat> we are pretty much halfway through, um, and today, God willing, we'll focus on uh, the cross and the crucifixion and the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't uh, joined us yet, or this is the first time, um, this is kind of like the structure of what we're going through. Um, we already spoke about who God is, and now we're in the, the bulk of the creed, which relates to what he does for us. And this is most prevalent in the person or the mission of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, so we spoke last time about the incarnation, and today we'll speak more about the redemption and salvation that we have uh, through the cross and resurrection of our Lord. Um, <clears throat> so pretty much today we'll, we'll focus on these words. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered, and was buried. Um, and there's actually... Uh, as Sina Therese says, this is the center of our faith, or the core of our faith. And so um, one lecture is not enough, but we'll just um, extract some major points from, from uh, the event of the crucifixion. And we'll actually continue um, referring especially to uh, the writing of St. Athanasius on the Incarnation, even though it's predominantly in the beginning focusing on uh, the Lord taking flesh, but uh, he also talks the importance of uh, the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord, uh, as we'll see. Um, <clears throat> so he was crucified. Um, again, there's a lot to say here. But St. Paul said, he, we preach Christ crucified. This is the core of the Christian faith. And this is the core of our salvation. Um, the, and it reveals the power of God and the wisdom of God, among many other things, as St. Paul says. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord took flesh. And the, the main purpose of this was to die on the cross. Um, and as St. Paul says, being found in appearance as a man, here's the incarnation, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the cross. So to the Jews, this is a stumbling block. To the Greeks, this is foolishness. But to those, for us, to those who are called, um, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Um, and the Lord suffered and died outside the camp, um, or outside of the gate. Um, and this is, this is the humiliation that he took upon um, himself as as why? For us. Um, and that's why the church, if you noticed in the creed, we already talked about who for us men and for our salvation, right, came down from heaven, right? But he did everything for us. And that's why the, the, in the creed we mention again, for us, right? And when we say for us, it's not just for us as a collective whole in the church, but also for me personally, we should uh, taste that uh, the, the Lord came down from heaven, did all of these things for me. Um, and that's the beauty of, of our faith, is we have this personal relationship um, with our Lord. And where do we see it most? In, in his crucifixion. Um, <clears throat> and uh, St. Athanasius writes, having proved his Godhead by his works, by the miracles that he performed and the healings that he performed, and even raising Lazarus from the dead, right? He might offer the sacrifice on behalf of all. This is the cross. Surrendering his own temple, his own body, to death in place of all and we'll get more into this in a minute, to settle man's account with death. So th this was the purpose, right? To settle our account with death. Why? Because in Genesis, what did God tell Adam? They, the day you eat of the tree, you shall surely die, right? The, the, the point after any one of us or all of us commit sin, we deserve death. So he had to settle, Christ had to settle man's account with death and free him from the primal transgression. The same act also, he showed himself mightier than death, right? Displaying his own body incorruptible as the first fruits of the resurrection. Um, <clears throat> so, as St. Athanasius says, the, the two main problems with sin, it led to death and corruption. And when Christ took flesh, he, his main two goals was to remove this and take this um, uh, upon himself, um, so that man wouldn't have to suffer death 
and corruption. Um, <clears throat> and St. Augustine has a be beautiful passage here. He says, when he when speaks to God in his confessions, he says, you loved me, you took my nature, and you died for me. How can I do this very thing which hurts you? How can I sin? That, and I know it hurts you. It is though I stand at the foot of the cross, and I see you bleeding, suffering, suffocating for my sake, for my sake, again, these important words, then I turn my back on you and walk away with a hard heart to join those who crucified you. And this is what we do, unfortunately. Like, we see God, we see Christ on the cross, we see all he does for us, and we still sin, and we turn our back on God. And that, that should lead us to, uh, to mourn for our sins and to repent um, and to ask God, give me, O Lord, a heart of flesh for this hard heart of stone. Replace my stony or rocky heart uh, with a soft heart like yours. Um, and so this is the power of the cross that does it. If I, if I look to the cross with, with the, the main phrase in mind, for my sake, Right? And I think I mentioned this to you before, but uh, Father Beshoi Kamel of blessed memory, um, who suffered much in the flesh and, and died at a very early age, but he was a lover of the cross to the point where he would put um, uh, an icon of the cross just above his bed um, and just contemplate on it for hours and look at it for hours. And what, once he was found to, he just wrote, uh, I think it's two words in Arabic, but he, he wrote the phrase for my sake um, on a piece of paper and taped it right under that uh, to remind himself this, this was done for me. Um, <clears throat> and the more we go into the mystery of, of this very important aspect, <laughs> the, the closer we get to God and the easier it is for us to repent and, and the more we feel God's love for us in our daily life. Okay, so here's, that's the mystery is to, to contemplate on those words. Uh, St. Augustine also says, there was no more fitting means of healing our wretchedness, nor should there have been one. For what was more necessary to raise our hope and to liberate the minds of mortals as they groveled in despair of immortality than to demonstrate to us how much we matter to God and how much he loved us. Okay, so if anyone says, God doesn't love me, just look at the cross. <laughs> um, and uh, it will soften uh, your heart. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And he also continues, since God did everything for my sake, I need to imitate him and do everything for his sake, right? Or for the gospel's sake. Um, <clears throat> and that's the Christian walk. Um, as, as the scripture said, the Lord said, whoever desires to lose his, 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 sorry, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever desires to lose his life for my sake, for Christ's sake, we'll find it, right? So we save ourselves by what? Doing everything for God's sake. Why? Because he did everything for our sake out of his love for us, okay? Um, and St. Paul, in another place in the second Corinthians, uh, second epistle, he says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, um, yet for your sakes, he became poor. He, he, he became man, <laughs> right? And he was also poor financially. Uh, that you that through his poverty you might become rich right rich in grace rich in um attaining the kingdom of heaven rich in being partakers of the divine nature like that's that that's the re true richness okay um he suffered and this is placed in the in the creed um for the sake of some of uh the heresies that were saying, oh, he didn't really suffer. Because he was God, he didn't feel anything on the cross. Absolutely not. That, that would deny the, in, the, the, the actual incarnation. Um, <clears throat> or he just seemed to, to die on the cross. He just fainted. No, he, he, he actually died. <laughs> and he suffered, right? Um, and read Isaiah chapter 53, very clear prophecy of the cross, um, and it's very transformative when, when we contemplate on these words. And if you look also in the book of Acts, what did St. Philip, um, the, the deacon, do um, to convert um, the Ethiopian eunuch? He was already reading uh, this passage, and he just helped him connect the dots between Isaiah 53 and the cross. Um, and so he suffered, so I wouldn't have to suffer because of my sins. He was bruised for my iniquities. Um, 
by his wounds, I am healed. Um, I have been lost, but we were um, returned back to paradise, or we have the opportunity to return back to paradise because um, Christ bore my sins for me. Okay. Um, again, this is the, the basic core of Christianity, but I think orthodoxy really reveals the depth of and, and beauty of um, of the Lord of the, and his passion. Um, St. Cyril of Alexandria also says, we confess that the very word Logos Christ, who was begotten from God the Father, even though he was impassable in his own nature, he suffered in the flesh for us, according to the scriptures, right? Like Isaiah 53. And was in the crucified body, taking to himself the sufferings of his own flesh. Okay? Um, that doesn't mean we don't suffer in our life. Yes, we do. We suffer because of maybe bad mistakes that we, we made or just because um, the, our fallen uh, nature or weak nature um, or because we're sinful, right? But he was not sinful, right? He was alone without sin, but he, and, and he didn't need an, to, to experience suffering, but he took it upon himself for our sake, okay? Um, you can't really stress that uh, enough. <laughs> um, See, John Chrysostom says, well, compare your suffering to Christ's suffering, right? W what are your sufferings to compare with those of your master? You have, been, have you been publicly condemned? Maybe 1% a, a of us, right? No such thing. <laughs> are you mocked? A little bit here and there, but not like Christ was mocked. Um, yet not your whole body were you whipped and, and, and naked and crucified. And even if you, someone hit you, right, it was not in the way the same way as Christ was crucified. Um, uh, so again, his suffering is important because his divinity didn't shield his humanity from the suffering. Meaning, because he was God, that doesn't mean he, he didn't feel pain. Of course he felt pain. And, and he wanted to feel pain. Like if you look at Philippians, uh, Colossians chapter 2, like where, where, where he had the intention, it was a joy for him to suffer on our behalf. It wasn't joyful at the time, but because he was doing it for us, it made him happy. <clears throat> okay, uh, why? Because he loves us. <laughs> okay, um, so <clears throat> um, those are like an in-depth study of, of those words, but let's kind of look at the broader picture of the redemption, or how did God, and this is according to St. Athanasius on the Incarnation, how did God solve the problem where he said to Adam, you eat of the tree, you sin, you're going to die. All of us sin, and all of us deserve death. We don't deserve to go to heaven and to live with God forever in paradise, right? And who's going who's gonna to die on our behalf? The, the, the second death, not the first death, but um, the eternal condemnation, you know, in, in, um, separate from God, right? Um, so someone had to pay that price, right? Um, and so St. Athanasius goes through the points of, well, it couldn't be an angel. It couldn't be any person. It couldn't be an animal, like sacrifices in the Old Testament. Um, why did it have to be Christ? He goes through the points. So point number one, there has to be bloodshed, right? Um, and that's why the Lord said, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remission of sins. So there's a connection between shedding blood and forgiveness of sin. Right? That's why in the Old Testament, there was a lot of animal sacrifices sacrificed and their blood shed to get the point across that there has to be um, a consequence or um, the shedding of blood to cleanse. Doesn't make sense. But again, this was all pointing to the cross thousands of years before it happened. Right? And that's why in Hebrews, St. Paul reiterates this to, to the Jews saying, there's no forgiveness or remission of sins without shedding blood. Okay, that's the first point, right? And then he goes a few chapters later. So Christ, that he might cleanse us and purify the people with his own blood, he suffered outside of the gate of Jerusalem uh, with the condemned. Um, so that's point number that there has to be shedding of blood. But what about death? Yes, it has to go to the point of death, right? So whatever sacrifice that was offered for the sake of man's sin, there had to be a death. So it couldn't be like an angel sacrificing himself. First of all, angels don't shed blood, right? Um, so it had to be 
something that could die and could shed blood, right? As, as St. Paul says, the, wage, the wages of sin is death, right? So the death was the punishment of, of man's sin. He couldn't just erase the punishment because then, as St. Nathan has just said, God would go against his word. And God doesn't do that. Um, God can't deny or override or overrule himself. He can't say, no, just kidding. I didn't mean that. I meant this. No, he said what he meant, right? And he meant what he said. Um, and so uh, St. Paul also, uh, St. Paul goes in depth with this in Romans, especially the first few chapters. Um, like in chapter five, he says, through one man, sin entered into the world because, you know, Adam and Eve, they were the first to sin, right? Um, and because they sinned, death entered, right? Um, and death, as he said, spread to all men, kind of like a virus, <laughs> right? Um, why? Because all have sinned. Um, and so uh, there had to be um, uh, bloodshed. There had to be death. And it, but it couldn't be the death of an animal or the bloodshed of you know, a lamb, right? just the Lamb of God. It had to be a man. Why? Um, again, um, death spread to all men, right? Um, so, uh, as St. Athanas has explained, ma man had an account with death. He deserved to die. All humankind deserves to die. So there had to be a man to take that um, punishment upon himself, okay? But, if, you know, anyone, like, for example, if I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll be the, the sacrificial lamb and I'll die for the sins of all the world. But that doesn't make sense. You're a sinner too. Yes. <laughs> so I can't do that. It has to be a man without sin. And, and a man that's not just living, you know, in a, in a certain period of time, but can uh, encompass all sins of all men and women from Adam until the second coming, right? So it had to be someone unlimited, right? Um, and that's why it had to be the, the, the perfect man who was also unlimited as God, okay? Does that kind of make sense? I hope. Um, so um, the unlimited atonement or, or uh, forgiveness that was offered um, by the sacrifice of Christ satisfied um, all of these points. Had to be bloodshed, had to be death, had to be a human being, um, but someone timeless <laughs> um, and someone who is without sin. So like they're willingly taking this on, but not condemn themselves. Um, and that's why the Lord said, which of you convicts me in sin? No one could convict Christ of sin because he didn't do anything wrong. He's, he's, got, he's um, the perfect one. Um, the perfect sacrifice is the one that is blameless. Um, and, and so that's why the Lord also, um, as son of God, he became son of man. He became a uh, man to take upon himself the punishment um, of man. Okay. Um, so just to re reiterate and bring all these points together, uh, St. Athanasius is saying, being the word of the Father superior to all other agents, he's, he's above all of those other examples of, of a sacrifice, right? Uh, he was the only one who was able to renew the universal creation, the only one equal to suffering for the sake of all, and acting as an ambassador to the Father concerning all things. He, he was the only one could, who could satisfy all of these points, right? Um, he handed his body, or this body, the body that he took, over to death in exchange for all right? Um, like, uh, see, uh, in, in the Acts, right, it says he purchased the church with his blood, right? Uh, an exchange for an exchange. His body um, for the sake of all the sins of mankind throughout history. <laughs> um, and then he conveyed it to the Father, doing this also from human love. So we have to remember, we did, he did this out of love, not that he was forced to <laughs> um, so that having, all having died in him, so we all kind of um, paid the price of death through his price, um, the law imposing corruption on humans would be relaxed. So we don't deserve corruption anymore. And so that he can convert to incorruption the human beings who had reverted to corruption and restore them from death 
to life. Okay, so here's the restoration, here's the redemption, here's the salvation in, in Christ. Um, he puts it so much beautifully. Uh, so, um, uh, also he continues by saying, having proved his Godhead by his works, all the miracles and, and deeds that he did, he might offer the sacrifice on behalf to all, <clears throat> surrendering his own temple to death in place of all. We, we already read this part, but again, to settle man's account with death. That's, that, that's the purpose, right? And free him, okay? Um, okay. Um, so some people ask uh, why the cross in particular of his death. And St. Athanasius, again, if you want to read, study this in, in depth, please read on the incarnation. Uh, there's a couple of chapters on the death and the resurrection towards the middle. Um, and... Uh, or I think it's towards the end. <laughs> um, so he goes through the different types of death and say it can't. It had to be the cross, um, or it was the perfect uh, death that he could offer. So why couldn't it be a natural death, like out of sickness or out of old age? Well, he says death is a result of natural weakness. Christ was not weak, but the Lord is not like that. He is not weak. He has the power of God and the word of God and very life itself. It's kind of like, you know, in the Old Testament, when they used to offer sacrifices, animals and pigeons and doves and all of that. Um, you couldn't say, oh, I have um, a lamb here that's a broken leg. I'll offer that. <laughs> it's like, what kind of offering is that? Like, why are you giving? Or I have one that's, that, that's just about to die or just died. <laughs> No, you want to offer the best, the strongest, the, the most perfect. Say, see, God, look, I'm giving you the best, right? Um, so Christ died in, in the, um, the prime of his life, right? Um, he, he, at the age of 33, not at like 93, right? Um, or, uh, so anyway, um, if he had died quietly in his bed like other men, it would have looked as if he did so in accordance with his nature. Oh, he just died like everybody. You know, he couldn't fight, you know, the natural course of, 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 of man's weakness anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, so then other people would doubt his divinity <laughs> as though he was deed no, no more than other men, right? See, he just had the same fate as all of us. No. Uh, so again, he didn't die a natural death. He didn't die a weak death. We kind of already glanced on this, but as, as the fathers contemplate, he died standing, not on bed like all of one of us, right? Um, and so this shows the victory. It shows the power. And we say the cross is the throne that he sat on the throne, right? As king. Um, that's how we, as Orthodox Christians, look at, at the cross. Not as, as weak, but as uh, he, he died a strong death, uh, powerful, because he is the Almighty. Um, and he submitted himself to this. <laughs> it wasn't brought upon him. He, he went to it, right? That the Savior might utterly abolish death, whatever form they offer to him. It's kind of like saying, you know, when you're like playing cards, pick a card, any card, right? Um, or um, basketball team or whatever. He says, you know, we don't need home court advantage. We'll play you anytime, anywhere, because we know we're going to beat you, <laughs> Right? That's what St. Athanasius is trying to explain here when he's saying, uh, any death is fine. You know, I'm not afraid of death and um, I'm, I'm more powerful than the death. Um, so uh, that's what we think of when we look at the cross. And in the hymn O Monogenes, which we uh, pray on Great Friday, the day of the cross, um, we say, on the cross, he showed what is greater than power. Power is not a, a, a strong enough word to describe how powerful God is on the cross, right? And that's why day in, day out, you know, uh, thousands of times that week, we say, thine is the power, okay? Um, okay, so he also didn't die a private death. Why? He didn't do it secretly. He rose secretly, but he didn't die secretly. Why? It's very important um, because, again, um, uh, our father says he would have been regarded merely as a teller of tales, liar, um, and because there was no witness of his death, no one would believe his resurrection. Oh, you just went on vacation for a few days and came back. How, how, do, how do we know you really died, right? That, that would 
ruin the whole purpose of man's faith in the cross and the resurrection. Everyone had to witness that he died. Um, and then when you found him later on, days later, um, you didn't have to witness necessarily the resurrection uh, to be there because it's obvious what happened. <laughs> um, so he says, how could his disciples have had boldness in speaking of the resurrection unless they could state as a fact that he had first died? That makes sense. Um, or how could the hearers be expected to believe their assertion unless they themselves, all, what was it, there was a multitude of people at his death. Um, to all witness, it's a historical fact that the Lord Jesus Christ um, of Nazareth died on the cross when? At the time of Pontius Pilate. So that's why the church put in that part under Pontius Pilate, because um, this is to prove that there was a, a real person named Jesus who lived during the time of the reign of Pontius Pilate, and he was the one who officially condemned him uh, to death. It was the people who wanted it, but he, nevertheless, he was, he was the one reigning at the time. Um, and if you go into the gospel, in the beginning of the gospel according to St. Luke, he gives even more detail of who the other leaders were and who was high priest and all of that. Um, so, um, like we were saying, it was the perfect death. It wasn't a private death. It wasn't a weak death. It wasn't a natural death. It wasn't an easy death, right? If you compare all the different types, you say, okay, fine. If you're going to kill me, get it over quickly. Just shoot me in the head, right? Well, they didn't have guns at the time. But no, he, he spent hours on the cross intentionally, right? Um, and it was painful. Um, but also, like when you're saying pick a card, any card, this was to show that um, it says this would have given ground for suspicion that his power over death was limited to the particular kind of, okay, fine, if you're going to kill me, do it in this way, no, whatever way you want. Um, death came to his body, therefore, not from himself, but from the enemy action, in order that the Savior might utterly abolish death in whatever form they offered it to him. Why? Because he is above all of this. Um, but he submitted himself to death. It didn't really matter how. The, what mattered to him was uh, to use the cross as, as a means um, for contemplation, for salvation, for revelation of his uh, glory and power and divinity, right? So that's why the Lord chose the cross. Um, so by destroying even this death, he might himself to be believed to be the life, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, how beautiful is that? So, um, but he also picked the the least honorable of the death. Like, you know, for example, when St. Paul was going to be killed or condemned, right? They were going to, um, they, or even when he was flogged, right? Or, or when they were going to punish him in a certain way and they realized that um, he was Roman citizen. It was like, oh, we can't, we can't kill him in a normal way, right? He, he wasn't crucified like St. Peter, even though it was the same day, same place, right? Same persecutors. But because he had Roman citizenship, they beheaded him um, out of respect. That's the honorable death <laughs> for the Roman. Uh, don't ask me why. But, you know, quick to the point, honorable. But for um, St. Peter, they crucified himself, him, him up, up, upside down because he wasn't worthy to, to uh, attain the same... Uh, blessing. He didn't feel to, to be crucified exactly like Christ. Um, so the, the cross was, in a sense, a curse. As St. As Paul refers to Deuteronomy, he says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh, having become a curse for us. Uh, for it is written, cursed it is everyone who hangs on a tree. So it was a very shameful uh, type of death. Um, and Christ said, that's fine. I will take the shame um, on behalf of man so I can elevate him to be with me forever. Um, <clears throat> there's no shame anymore in, in my beloved because I have restored him. Why? By taking that shame on myself. So Christ, who is going to lift that curse, could not properly be made liable to it, yet he had to receive the curse. He didn't deserve it, but he took it anyway, right? So he could lift it from us. He received the curse instead of being liable to it. And through this, he lifted the curse. Okay? Um, hope it makes sense. Uh, the other thing, it wasn't a short death. Again, this was intentional, not just because 
it was more painful, but because he took this time um, to let nature speak, the, the earthquake, the darkness, right? Um, <clears throat> the, the sun hidden for, for a time, um, the, the eclipse or, or, or whatever. Um, he also gave time for him to speak and him to reveal like the seven statements on the cross, right? Forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. I thirst, you know, all, all of these things um, is revealing his love, revealing his Godhead, okay? Um, <clears throat> and to reveal his, 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 who he is as, as God and man. Um, okay, so that's why it, it wasn't a, a short death and the most unforgettable death of, of all history. Uh, as St. Nathan says, this is the center and the core of our faith. And everywhere you hear men speak of it by it too, no less than by his other acts, Christ is revealed as God and Son of God. He always used this phrase, God and Son of God, um, uh, to, to show uh, his, in a sense, the, the Holy Trinity, right? Because he, he is God, but also Son of the Father. Um, and then to show how nature spoke and revealed him as their creator, right? And as God. He says, the sun veiled its face, the earth quaked, the mountains were torn asunder, all men were stricken with awe. These things showed that Christ on the cross was God. Like the whole time, he, and one of the fathers says, the whole time in the flesh, he's trying to prove his divinity. <laughs> and the whole time after the resurrection, he's trying to prove his humanity um, to show that he is the one and the same. Um, that all creation was his servant or slave and was bearing witness by its fear to the presence of its master. The master is here. The, the creator is here. We bow to him in worship. He's on the cross. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so the last point is we say the cross helps show um, how God is always working for reconciliation. He is, he is the perfect ambassador of reconciliation. Which reconciliation? That which happens between us and our fellow men, right? Uh, the, the sacrifice of the cross or the love of God helps perfect us to love our brethren, right? And to sacrifice on behalf of them, right? And to unite me and my family. And, and not only that, but all people, right? Um, as St. Athanasius says, he drew all people into himself, right? The, the Gentiles on one side, right? And the Jews on the other, he united in his person. He accepted all, right? But they have to go up through the cross. <laughs> and that's why I say you have to be baptized because you die and you rise with Christ. Um, so um, he joined all together in himself, but not just man and fellow man, but God and man, right? As we were saying before, he's, he's the only one who could do this. He's the only one who is God and man, and he united God and man and reconciled the two in his person, in his sacrifice, right? Just like Jacob's ladder in Genesis, right? There was a ladder from earth to heaven. Um, and the angels ascended and, and there was communication again and gifts and blessings going between the two and communication between the two and unity between the two. How does this happen? Through Christ, through Christ's sacrifice. Um, he, he returned man to his original state um, or gave him the opportunity at least, right? Um, as long as we go through him, we go through the cross, go through um, his sacrifice, um, then we are reunited with, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, this, this is why the cross is so <laughs> important and essential um, to our salvation. And so um, uh, these are just uh, a, few, a few points um, that uh, we... Uh, describe relating to the to the death and and suffering of our lord <clears throat> um and we're just scratching the surface but these are you know i think the basic um points that we have to remember of, of why the cross is so important um and as we'll see next time there, there's no there's no purpose or blessing um that we can tap into through the cross without the resurrection if he just died and didn't rise, then there's no hope for us, as, as we'll see uh, next time, God willing. God be with all of you, and, and bless you.
Glory be to him, now and forever, and to the age of all ages. Amen.